Greetings guys, time to make some measurements on our transition WR90 to SMA. So here's how I'm going to proceed. I have a frequency generator, microwave frequency generator, that I will sweep from 9.5 to 11.5 gigahertz, the target frequency being 10.368 gigahertz. That's the frequency ham radio uh, long haul uses. Okay, what I have here is a directional coupler. Essentially, what it does is most of the energy passes through. A little bit of that energy gets coupled onto these two ports. The incident uh, power, incident energy, goes into this termination. The reflected energy goes through this port. When I say just a, just a little bit of energy that's coupled, it's minus 30 dB from the signal here. Whatever signal is coming back, it's only one thousandth of that signal that's sent here. And this power, we sample it into this power sensor going into a Boomtune 9200A power meter. Uh, both the signal generator uh, can be controlled using GPIB, so I'm remotely controlling uh, the two instruments which will allow me to make sweep measurements pretty rapidly and then capture those directly on a computer and then be able to plot the curves. So, the idea is to measure the reflected energy. In other words, we're going to be measuring the return loss of our transition. And if you want, we can also convert the return loss values into voltage standing wave ratio, VSWR. No problem. All the way here, I use very high quality uh, cabling, connectors, adapters, and so on. A closer shot to show you both the directional coupler and the transition. Notice that I plugged the end with some copper tape. Now also notice that the copper tape is pushed in. If you look carefully, you'll see it's pushed in. Why is it pushed in? Well, the first test I did was really with flat tape, absolute flat tape. You're going to see the results of just the transition. Then when I mounted that transition onto the dish, I realized that I could tune the return loss and the standing wave ratio by moving this piece of copper closer to the probe inside. And that's why it's pushed in. Now let's go see the test results with the transition as is, open-ended, and then mounted on the dish. So in order to capture all these data points, I created a Python script that you see running right now that sets the frequency on the generator, waits a little bit for stabilization, makes a reading on the power meter, and then change the frequencies, and then takes another measurement, and so on, and those measurements are saved into a, a text file, which I can recover, and then massage into a spreadsheet program. And here are the results. So what you see here is a sweep from 9.5 gigahertz to 11.5 gigahertz, and this is a return loss, zero being the worst case you could ever get, a pure reflection, and then uh, minus infinity would be the best, meaning no reflection at all. Anywhere below minus 20 is considered pretty good as far as performance goes. And I'm going to also show you what it corresponds to in uh, standing wave ratio in, on the next uh, graph. So this is return loss, which reveals more in the best part. Okay, so I've identified 10.368, which is the frequency of interest. And the first curve I want to show you is the blue one, which is the unit open-ended on the table facing up. So uh, this is what you get, the blue line. And this was done prior to pushing in the copper foil on the back. Okay, It was like with a flush wall. And as you can see, we were very good already. <laughs> is it pure luck? I don't know. But my making of that uh, transition is a good one. <laughs> we're at uh, minus uh, 25 and better. Uh, in a pretty large uh, span here. Remember that the, every vertical line is 50 megahertz, so it's pretty good, pretty good. We're not quite centered on the, the dip, 
but this could be very useful already uh, being at minus 26 minus 27 okay as is this this is like if the transition was an antenna okay basically it's just sending rf out into thin air now this is not our final application our application is when mounted onto the dish and the result is the red curve as you can see there are many more wiggles on the line and this is due of course to the fact that we're now, we're now sending energy into the feed point and onto the dish and there are some reflections and all sorts of phenomena that cause these to happen mainly due to the geometry of the feed point and the, and the dish very likely or at very least we can say the geometry of the feed point this you have to know it's after tuning because when I initially mounted the, the transition on the dish, performance was not so good. It was around minus 15, minus 16, minus 17. And it's okay. It could have been uh, used as is. But hmm, I said, let's see if I can tune this thing. And I pushed the copper foil inward just a little bit. Uh, I was, uh, of course, set to 10.368, no sweep of frequency, just stable 10.368. And I looked at the power meter and I could see an improvement just by pushing a little bit. So I pushed more, pushed more and pushed more. And then, gee whiz, I was down to minus 25, minus 30. So, wow, I just found the way to tune the whole thing. So this is what I got. I could try to push it even deeper and, you know, deform the, the copper surface because it's sort of rounded because of my fingers. But this is great. It's best than minus 25. I leave it like this. I won't touch it anymore. So some good performances here at 9.8 something, 9.8, and then 10. Uh, what, 10 10.250. But there's no point in trying to aim uh, you know for this peak here maybe like i said if i tune this would move towards here and i would get a good dip but anywhere less than minus 20 i would have been very happy and this is what i'm getting now as a curiosity i dismounted the um, the transition from the dish and put it back open-ended and i measured again just to see how it had affected the open-ended uh, response and this is what I got a real deterioration in the return loss uh, so minus 12 minus 13 usable I would say but not great so the feed point of the dish and the dish itself they have an impact on the frequency response of the transition which is kind of expected if you think about it of course this is no longer a good way to measure the transition from now on i'll have to measure the transition when mounted on the dish but you know what i'm gonna leave it as is the end cap made of uh, self-sticking uh, copper foil does the work and it will stay like this now this is the same data but plotted on a vswr vertical scale so standing wave this talks more to many so this is our frequency of interest is that as you can see the red line is in the 1.1 to 1 VSWR for a, a big chunk of uh, uh, you know the span here and I just want you to realize that each of these vertical lines is 50 megahertz so it's a pretty wide range of operation here uh, you know to this edge here there's more than 100 megahertz of difference and we're not going to play there at all. So, very happy camper here. And on this, I say see you soon. 7-3.